Let's take a look at a second built-in Windows 7, Vista, and XP method for remotely accessing a computer. The next method of remote access we'll try is also built into Windows. And if I go to computer, let's undo what we did as far as connecting over RDP. So I'm on the remote desktop server, and I'm just going to remove that user account to be cautious and secure. And I'm going to choose don't allow connections to this computer and apply. So that's been undone. This is sort of back to a default state. So for our next method, we're going to use a remote assistance invitation. And this is another method of remote access built into Windows, so I would simply need to check this on the computer. This is the computer where I want to allow the remote connection to. And this is typically used for you know occasional connections where you might be helping a friend out or a customer or something. So I tick this option. I'm going to go to Advanced. I want to make sure that I also check Allow this computer to be controlled remotely. Notice by default that the invitations are only good for six hours. You can change that. Make it 99 if you like. Um, and then I can also say create invitations that can only be used from computers running Windows Vista or later. If I want to be more secure, albeit less compatible. So I'm going to click on OK. And once that's enabled, I can click on OK. So I've enabled this computer to be able to create and send a remote assistance invitation. And once I send it to someone else on another computer, they can open it. And then they'll have permission to connect to my computer, and they'll be able to control it and hopefully help me with my problem. So once I've enabled that, I'm not done yet. I want to go ahead and close that, and now I want to go to Start and Help and Support. And when I go to Help and Support, in this case I want to click on More Support Options, and I want to click on Windows Remote Assistance. And when I click on Windows Remote Assistance, it will launch this wizard here. And what I want to do is invite someone that I trust to help me. So this will create the file that I'm going to send them. And you can email it or copy it across the network, however you want to send it to them. So I'm going to go ahead and do, click on Invite. And then notice my options. I can use email to send an invitation if I have Outlook set up. And I don't on this machine, but if I did, um, you could use Easy Connect. Um, in this case, I'm just going to save it as a file. And then if I wanted to, I could just send it as a file attachment. I could zip it up. I could copy it across the network. Or whatever. Whatever. It's a file. It's portable. It's nice. So I'm going to save this invitation as a file. And I'm going to go and we'll put it on computer. And I'm going to just make a little directory here and call this invitations. Okay. And I'll just call this one help me. Help me please. And we'll save it. Okay. And then I have this password. Give your helper the invitation file and password. And so I would normally not store these together. In other words, I'd send him the file or her, and then she or he would call me, and then I would give them this password. So it's more secure that way in case, you know, maybe a hacker accidentally intercepted the file. So remember, that's the secure way. That's the way you want to do it. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to take this and store it in a text file. Again, you would never want to do this in real life. You would keep this key on your machine, have them call you, then give them your password, and then they log in. It's more secure that way. You don't want to put the password and the file together in real life. But for the purposes of demonstration, so we're not here all night, um, I'm going to put this in a text file, and I'll just put it in that same folder. Okay? Okay. So let me copy and paste, and save as, and I'm going to go to computer, C drive, and invitations, and we'll call this the key. The key. There. Okie dokie. And then, in this case, let me do, let me at least leave this here for now. And again, what I would do at this point, I would copy it to their computer. Um, they have a share, so I'm going to go make a share on the client, and then we'll copy it to their computer. We can email assistance invitations as a file attachment, or as in this case, have someone copy it via a network share. And if I were just going to allow someone to copy it across a local area network, like maybe a coworker or a friend in the office that I wanted to help me, 
I could just put it in, you know, I could just share that folder basically and let them copy it from the folder. So I'm going to do that. Remember we saved it in invitations. I'm just going to right click properties, go to sharing, advanced sharing, share this folder. Um, and on permissions, I'm going to remove everyone and add remote user. Again, you know, I want to make sure that this is a special account that only that person knows about. They only need read access. They don't need write. Um, but I want to add that to the sharing. And remember that it's the combination um, of sharing and the local permission. So I'd also want to make sure that I had added, you know, at least authenticated users or users. Or if I wanted to, I could explicitly just say remote user. Remove everybody else if, you know, if I wanted to. And you only need read access or she or whoever is going to help me. Okay, so that's shared. So if I were to look at, you know, I'm on Starbuck. And if I were to look at it, this is what they would see if they looked at my shared computer. They would go in here. And unless I connect as a remote user, I can't connect. And that's fine. So that's all set up. And here's the file. And there's the key. So this is on the computer where I want assistance. Now let's go onto the computer that would be doing the assisting. Leaving the assistee, we will go to the assister, copy the file, run it, and input the key. So now I'm on the computer that's going to be doing the assisting. And I might first open a command prompt since I'm on a local area network. And in this example, I'm not using email. I just want to make sure that I have basic connectivity and I can indeed reach the computer. So I might ping the IP address just to see if it's there. And let's see, let me go. Okay, it's there. And then I could try the host name. So I can make a connection. And then I just want to connect to the share. And remember that the only permission, the only account that has permission to log into that share by design, the way we set it up, um, was remote user. And so in this case, I want to log in as a remote user, go to invitations, and here's the invitation file, and here's the key. And I just want to copy that to my local machine. So I'm going to, you know, right-click, copy, and I'm just going to paste it over here onto my desktop. Might as well throw it on the desktop. And again, just making sure that you have connectivity to the machine. Um, I'm ready to proceed. After we've copied everything over, let's connect the Assister Galactica to the Assistee Starbuck by clicking on the Assistance Invitation file and entering the key. So now on the machine that's going to be doing the assisting, I'm going to go ahead and click on Help Me Please Incident. Now it's going to tell me to enter the password. And I put it in a text file, but remember if you're really going to be secure about this at this point, this is where you would actually um, you know, call the person and then they would give you the password maybe over the phone or something in a more secure fashion. But for demonstration purposes, we, we stored it in a text file. And I guess if you didn't care about security, you could just might as well paste it in an email and send it to them. Either way, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. And go ahead and paste the key in there and I'm going to click on OK. And it's going to attempt a remote assistance connection. And here's what the assistor sees. So now I'm connected and I can remotely manage their computer and they can see what I'm doing, but this way I can kind of log in and if I needed to fix something or you know change some of their settings, I'd be able to do so and possibly assist them with their problem. And how could we do this by email? Another possible way to send it. would be as an email attachment. And in this case, you could use you know, Gmail or Yahoo Mail. I'll just use Yahoo Mail here. So, uh, let me sign in. And 
and I just send an email and I'd send it to the person in this case I'm sending it to myself because it's me okay but whoever was the person that was going to help you you'd address it to them and help me please maybe make it sound urgent or something like that um, repeat the message click on the um, invitation and help me so click on the remote assistance invitation and help me and then I just attach it as a file attachment so I'm going to click on attach go to computer local disk invitations and you know I would just want to send this I wouldn't want to send the key in case a hacker got it and then you know I'd have them call me and get the key but you know again if security's not important if it's just a machine that you know I could I could send them both I could go ahead and attach the key there or possibly even just paste the key in the email if I wanted to do that I could see what the key is and This is not secure, okay? And then I would just poof, there's the email, message sent. And so all I have to do is wait now, and then when they get the email, they can save the file attachment, click on the file, and put the key, and they'll be able to log into my computer and help me.